Praise the Lord. Good morning and welcome to the Sunrise with Jesus. Friends, today is a very special feast for the church and very many of us have been preparing for this feast, the feast of St. Joseph, the patron and protector of the church, the foster father of Jesus, our Lord. Friends, the earth's greatest treasures are known to be diamonds. And guess what? Diamonds are not found on mountain tops. They are hidden in the deepest depths of the earth. In order to mine diamonds, you need to go down at least about 150 to 250 kilometers below the earth's surface and sometimes 800 kilometers below the earth's surface. And here is where we see that the spirituality of Saint Joseph is such a rich and multi-dimensional treasure, but hidden, so deeply hidden and available only for those who are willing to wait and watch. We always thought of Saint Joseph as the silent foster father of Jesus. He is described in a couple of words as being just and not even one word of what he spoke has been recorded. But like Pope Francis says, Saint Joseph shows us that those who appear hidden, those who appear to be in the shadows can play incomparable roles in the history of salvation. We have looked at how St. Joseph practically redefines all the spiritual virtues for us. He has shown us that the greatest call to follow God is always born in moments of suffering and adversity. He showed us that chastity is the highest expression of love. He showed us that work and hard labor is holy and dignified. He has shown us that those who search for Jesus will find Jesus. He has shown us that the power of the word of God is reserved for those who are attentive, for those who are obedient and those who generously and immediately respond to the call of God. He has shown us that our sojourn on this earth is but as migrants, but with a great consolation that Christ himself accompanies everyone who is helpless and homeless. He has shown us that fearlessness is one quality that is needed to be one who stands with the church. And finally, he has revealed to us that evangelization is a gentle, respectful offering of the very love of God himself. Friends, when we look at St. Joseph, we realize there is so much more that he has to offer for us in this time and age that we live in. He happens to be the patron of a peaceful and happy death. For we know through tradition that he was the one who died on the lap of Jesus with Mother Mary by his side. And today we are looking at a most precious offering of Saint Joseph to the church and to the world as a father figure. Saint Joseph's call was in fact to represent God the Father to Jesus as his earthly father and has continued over the centuries to be a faithful guardian for everyone who turned to him in prayer. Saint Joseph has very precious lessons, especially in this time when the world is overwhelmed with an orphan complex. What is an orphan complex? It refers to the fear and the desperation, the despair, the greed and the anger that is there stored in a child who has no parent to fall back on, no parent to provide for it or to protect it. And here is where Saint Joseph is presented to us 
not only to be a father but to show those of us who are parents who are fathers and mothers what is the great and necessary call we have to live out and the first thing that saint joseph teaches us is that every child is precious friends saint joseph is a father of a child who is not his own he was a father to the son of god and yet by the way he dedicated himself offering his entire life as a sacrifice to serve the child the messiah he reveals to us that our greatest and most precious call and value is in being a parent and we derive that identity from our children and therefore our children are the most precious treasures that we have in hand given to us by a most precious god i have so many friends dear friends who have adopted children and i realize something that god can give us a child either in the hand or in the womb god can give a child with different abilities or sometimes as a world would call it disabilities but every child is a most precious gift and when we honor the child we are honoring god because it is god who gave us the gift of the child they are god's children and therefore we give them the ultimate value and concern and love and yet we must realize that however much you love and treasure your child know that all the love that you have is but a shadow of god's love for them you can never love your children as much as god loves your children and whatever you have planned for your children know this god always has the supreme the best and the most unimaginably glorious plan for your child and therefore know this there is no space for anxiety fear and despair because your child is god's own child secondly we realize that precisely because they are god's children and we are but two words our first responsibility is to lead them to god dear friends being a parent means i cannot steal the place of god in their lives i must ensure i introduce them to jesus i must ensure that i keep leading them back to find their father god because it is only when they find their god that they will find their true identity and their true value and thirdly we realize that parents are the living teachers and the textbooks what your children see in you is what they would understand of god of the world and of life if you have nursed hatred and anger you've trained them for hatred if you have disrespected your spouse or your parents well you can be so sure they will treat you later on just as you treated the least of your brethren if you have shown them the way of love and loyalty you have given them the finest of blessings and if you have given without calculation you have trained them to be people who love without calculation just like their heavenly father yes this is the responsibility the call of every parent to mold their children to be in the image and likeness of the father god friends we know that being a father to a god child a divine child is no easy job and we know from the journey of saint joseph that he encountered so many trials so many troubles and yet he was firm in his decisions and he fulfilled his mission to perfection today this is the great hope that we have that saint joseph is there for every parent who faces a trial 
because ultimately being a parent is yes walking in the steps of saint joseph to be a divine parent to god's most precious gift to you your children my dear brothers and sisters a beautiful example in the bible in the gospels saint joseph this great saint saint joseph an ordinary jewish young man dreaming of an ordinary jewish family life he learned carpentry to feed his wife and children waiting for a colorful life and mary of the same village was betrothed to him and joseph was dreaming dreams of a beautiful married family life and that's when joseph was shattered because he heard the news that mary was with child and he just couldn't understand why he just couldn't understand why did this happen to me and joseph ran to make sure he could not disbelieve his eyes mary was pregnant she was with child and joseph in his distress he went to the synagogue authority and told him sir i'm in trouble mary betrothed to me is now with child the synagogue authority told him joseph no no she she will not do it no she's a good woman and joseph said i also know that she's a good girl of a good jewish family she will not do it but how can i disbelieve my eyes she is with child well the synagogue authority said to him joseph i hate to tell you this there is the law of moses such girls are to be stoned to death that is a jewish law law of moses and then joseph you can pursue your dreams of a colorful life with another girl Joseph said no no i can't even think of it mary is a good girl she would not do it i don't understand not able to understand in that distress joseph waited and prayed that's when the angel came and said to joseph joseph don't be afraid don't be anxious mary is with child because of the holy spirit it is the fulfillment of god's plan of salvation for human kind that god must come down for god to become man god needed a woman out of whom god could be born as a man and mary is the chosen mother of the son of god and you are the chosen foster father of the son of god of the savior of the world and joseph was so relaxed he began to thank and praise god well now i understand and joseph became a powerful link in the history of salvation hallelujah 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 my dear sisters and brothers the synagogue authority a man of jewish law could not understand this i was wondering to myself if joseph had relied on the law well joseph would have handed over mary to be stoned to death when mary stoned to death the baby in her would also have been killed naturally speaking and god's plan of salvation would have been destroyed but joseph chose to wait and pray 
and that is the message jesus is telling us wait and pray you know we are in a hurry all the time we are in a hurry we make instant decisions someone did something wrong to me i am anxious i'm angry i want to retaliate instant answers instant coffee instant tea instant marriage instant divorce all instant culture the lord is calling us out of that instant culture and telling us wait for the whole truth because the holy spirit is the spirit of truth shall we say praise the lord for that hallelujah 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 Praise you, Lord Jesus. 
Jesus, thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We proclaim our love for you. Praise you, Jesus. We rejoice. We rejoice in your presence, O oh God. We trust in your mercy. Your mercy, O oh Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you. Your great mercy is our hope. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We rejoice in your presence, O oh God. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, praise Thank you, you Jesus. Jesus. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Lord. Dear friends, as we are gathered in the presence of our God, and we rejoice in His presence because here we get the promise. As He is present to us now in the Holy Eucharist, He will be present to us the whole day at every moment, and that is His mighty power. Psalm 147, verses 3, 4, and 5 gives us a great message. The psalm says, Great is our Lord and mighty in power. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. And what is the might of His power? What is the greatness of our Lord? He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He tells the stars the number of stars. He calls each by name. The greatness of the Lord, the might of His power. He counts the stars and tells them each by name. He's the Lord of the stars. In the beginning, it is He who created the stars. At the same time, the Lord who is busy counting the stars, placing them in their right space, is also busy. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. That's the greatness of our Lord. He's not only controlling the whole universe. He's not only the Lord of the universe. He's the Lord of our hearts. He's the Lord of our wounds. He's the Lord of everything that goes wrong with us. He binds up our wounds. We claim that promise today from the Lord. Lord, however much we will be wounded, we will be hurt you are there to bind up our wounds. When you are there to bind up our wounds, nothing will break us. Nothing will ever lead us to despair. We trust in your mercy, Lord. Your grace is enough. Your grace, O oh God, is enough for us to make this day your grace. We open our heart for your grace to flow into us and fill us to make it a grace-filled day when you are present to us at every moment. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. Your faithfulness today. You wrestle with the sinner's restless heart. You lead us by still waters into mercy And nothing can keep us apart So remember your people Remember your children Remember your promise, O oh God Your grace, your grace, your grace is, is enough for me. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for. Me. 
Great is your love and justice, God of Jacob. You use the weak to lead the strong. You lead us in the song of your salvation. And all your people sing along. So remember your people. Your people. Remember your children. Your children. Lord. Remember your promise of God. Grace is enough. enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me. Your grace is enough. Your grace is Your enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your presence is enough. Jesus, your presence, your, your grace, of oh God, your grace, of oh God. I'm reaching out to you, Jesus. Your grace is your enough grace. for me. We venture on this day. Your grace is in your enough. Grace. Your grace, your grace is, is enough. enough. Your grace Jesus. is enough. For me. Praise you, Jesus. Thank Praise you, Lord. Jesus, thank for this Lord. new day given to us as your grace. For your grace that will accompany and strengthen us at every moment. Jesus, your grace. Your grace. Storms may rage. Waves may rise. People may turn away from us. Failures may stare into our eyes. Work may be hard and tiring. And the Lord, you will not leave us alone. Your grace, your Holy Spirit will be with us the whole day to strengthen us, to soothe us, to comfort us, and show us the way. Jesus, send us your Spirit. Let your Holy Spirit descend upon us remain with us the whole day. That blessing is what we ask of you. Your Spirit, do not take your Holy Spirit away from us. Let your Holy Spirit fill us and lead us today. Sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. 